Hello all, since we have completed the design of a neuron, in this tutorial I will be discussing the design of the layers. So as you know neural networks, uh, the fully connected neural networks, they are composed of multiple layers. There will be definitely one input layer as well as an output layer and one or more hidden layers, right? Okay, so we are trying to design something like this in the figure uh, with five layers here. So the input layer has 784 neurons and uh, hidden layers have 30, 30 and 10 neurons and the output layer has again 10 neurons, okay? So that's what we are trying to design. So you can see like it is uh, a fully connected design. So the first thing I'm going to do is, okay, so just instantiate all the neurons in a single module and call it as a layer. Now, as you know, the input layer, it really is not a, uh, layer of neurons okay so this is just representing the inputs coming to the neural networks so these things although they look like neuron they are just representing the input so these uh, we do not have to physically implement using neurons so this 784 it is just representing the total number of inputs coming to our neural network we need to implement starting from this uh, first hidden layer which has 30 neurons then another 30 then another 10 and finally again that okay so here you can see it this is our so-called layer one and we need 30 neurons there so you can see uh, i have just instantiated 30 neurons here now we could have used uh, generate statement for doing it those who are familiar with uh, weight log generate statement usually uh, we don't instantiate it one by one like this we just use a generate statement and use a for loop to instantiate neuron. The challenging part here is since the weights and biases are stored in some files, we need to pass the name of those files here if we are uh, trying to read it from the files instead of sending it through the interface. So these file names uh, we cannot generate using the generate statement. He, he doesn't support uh, generating these strings by concatenation or things like that, okay? So that's why we are forced to uh, explicitly instantiate them instead of using the general statement. So this is uh, layer one, uh, this is layer two, again 30, this is layer three, uh, just 10, and this is layer four, again 10. So next part looks very straightforward. We have to just instantiate all these layers in another file and just connect them together, right? Now, uh, here is our issue again. So in this figure, you can see all these neurons, okay? They are taking all the inputs from the previous layer concurrently, okay? Every neuron here is connected with every other neuron in the previous layer. That's why we call it a fully connected one. But you will see they are all connected concurrently. But in our neuron design, that's not how we did. Okay, in our neuron design, we just have one input irrespective of the number of predecessors. Okay, so it can be 10, 30, 100, any numbers. We have only one input. Okay, so we cannot just instantiate it in uh, one file, all these four layers, and just connect them together. It doesn't simply work. So instead, what we need to do is uh, we need to take the output from one layer parallelly and uh, convert it into serially and send it to the next layer one by one okay so that's what we have to do and that's what is done here so uh, details i will discuss so first let's see so this is where the instantiation of layer one this is the instantiation of layer two this is for layer three and this is for layer four okay so that part looks uh, straightforward now let's see the connection between this layer one and layer two that means this guy and this guy okay so he is giving output from 30 neurons and each one is 16 bit wide so where is the output from so the output is this one layer one output so again what i have done here see uh, layer one this is the output and it is calculated as nn times so nn is representing the number of neurons in this particular neural layer so total number of neurons times the data width, okay? So I have flattening the output from all the neurons into a bus because in weight lock you cannot have uh, two-dimensional 
array as an interface because that is representing a memory, not a bus. So first we are flattening the output. So we take uh, output from uh, each neuron. You can see like, yeah, this is how it is calculated. Okay, X out. So using the index number, first neuron zero, second neuron one, so on and so forth, we take uh, output from each neuron, which is data width wide and combine it into a single bus and we call it just X out. And we take the valid signal also and combine it to a single uh, bus. Now, the data valid from all the neurons will be becoming high at the same time because all of them have same number of pipelining and all of them are getting same input. You can see same input is going to all of them because again, this is fully connected, right? So all of them will be getting input at the same time, same number of pipeline, uh, no back pressure. That means all of them will be giving output at the same time, okay? So it is not really necessary to take all valid because one valid will represent output from all neurons are valid, but still, uh, let's take it. So that's what is coming here. This is the output from first layer. So remember, this has the output from all the neurons within this layer. That I am not directly feeding to layer 2 input. Instead of that, that is going to a memory. So this is whole data 1. So you can see the declaration here. Number of neurons in layer 1 times data width. Okay, So which is uh, the total width of the data coming out of layer 1. I am storing that output data into this big register. Okay, so let's call it register. I'm storing it to this big register. When I'm storing, whenever O1 data valid. So this data valid, I'm checking only the zeroth bit because as I mentioned, all neurons will give valid output at the same time. So whenever uh, the first neuron is giving a valid output, I'm latching the ender output to this register inside a small state machine in my idle state. And once I latch it, I'll go to a state called the send state. And you can see what is happening in the send state. I am just right shifting this, this big register. So it is acting like a big shift register. I'm right shifting it every clock by data width. Okay, we are right shifting by that much. And the rightmost data here, since we are right shifting, after each clock, the rightmost data with those many bits we will lose. So those many bits I am actually latching to another register called out data one. Its width is actually data width. So this out data one is getting connected to the next layer. Okay, so that is the trick. So instead of directly connecting it, you can imagine there is a big shift register sitting in between each layer and the output from the layer first gets stored in that shift register, then uh, clock after clock, that will get shifted to the next layer. So this logic perfectly works. You can imagine like uh, the previous layer will be getting next input uh, at this time. So for this logic to work, okay, so the number of neurons in a particular layer should be equal to or less than the number of neurons in the previous layer. Otherwise, you can imagine what will happen. Before we shift out all the data here, uh, the previous layer will be giving new output and our logic will break. So practically, if you look at any neural network, uh, the number of neurons in the predecessor will be always uh, equal to or greater than the number of neurons in a particular uh, layer. I haven't seen any case where the number of neurons in a predecessor is less than this one. There could be cases. In that case, we will have to modify this logic. We will have to add a uh, back pressure, like our ready signal from this state machine to the previous uh, logic, which is giving data to the previous layer. Okay, So that's what we have to do. So in most practical case, uh, this thing will work. So same logic we are using between every layer. So this one, this state machine is for uh, between layer 1 and layer 2. And this one for layer 2 and layer 3. This one layer 3 and layer 4. Okay. Now the question is how layer 1 is uh, going to get data. That means this guy. So this guy should get data from the external world. For that, we have an AXI stream interface here. 
So this is from where the original data is going to come. This 784 data that is going to come through this interface, our standard access stream. So the ready signal, as of now, you can see it is always ready. So as I mentioned before, if a back, proper, uh, back pressure, if you have to implement, we have to add that logic here you know, from that state machine. Current implementation that is not needed. So this data is directly going as the input to the first layer and this valid is directly going as the valid to our first layer. So things look straightforward. Now, the only thing remaining is what happens to the data coming out of the last layer. So we have it here. This is our last layer. This is the data coming out of that. Uh, currently, it is getting latch here. And from there, it is going as out data for but uh, as of now, this is not connected anywhere. So practically what you need, again, uh, we are trying to do that MNIST data set. That means we are trying to find handwritten digits. So that's why we have 10 neurons in the output layer. Each neuron will represent one of the digits. So if the input digit is zero, this guy's output should be larger than the output from all other neurons. Okay? If it is one, the input data, this guy's output should be uh, greater than all others. So we need some logic after this who is comparing the output from all these neurons and detects which neurons output is the highest and say like okay so the input uh, represents this particular digit. That part uh, we will do in the next tutorial because we also have to add some more logic to our input in addition to the access stream because uh, if we are not using pre-trained we need some logic which is sending the weights and biases to our neural network as well as we need some logic which takes the output from this logic which is uh, detecting the maximum output and send it back to the external world. So that part we will do in our next tutorial. Thank you.